My NDE happened on August 22nd, 2008 at 1.20 p.m. I had just turned 34 years old and I woke up early that morning in an unbelievable amount of pain and I was burning up from a very high fever. I could barely move, I was in so much pain, but I was able to reach for the phone to call a family member to be taken to the emergency room. I was in and out of consciousness, but I was still in my body. I hadn't had my NDE at that point yet. I had just come out of having a CT scan and I was taken to a part of the emergency room where they closed the curtains off so we could wait for the results and see what was next. I was in a tremendous amount of pain and I had been for several hours at this point. I was taken into the emergency room at about 7.30 a.m. that morning. So I had been through a lot. The pain was increasing, my fever was getting worse and I was very weakened from being in so much pain for so long. And so as I was lying there on the hospital gurney with my eyes closed, I began convulsing and my head had so much pressure in it. I could feel the veins popping out. I felt like my head was going to explode from all of the pressure. And right when I knew I couldn't take any more, I went very internal. I disconnected completely from the external world, from everyone that was around me, from everything that was outside of my body. I thought to myself, I'm dying. This is what it feels like to die. And I wasn't scared. It was just a very matter of fact knowing. And right at that moment, I popped out of my body. I was no longer attached to my body and the pain was completely gone. I was so detached that I then noticed that I was up on the ceiling of the room that I was in. And I was looking down at the scene below me and I could see my body lying there on the gurney, but I could see that I, my essence was no longer a part of that body, that it was just the shell of who I am. I saw the people around me scurrying around. I felt their various emotions of being frightened, being bewildered, wondering what was happening, moving into action, assessing. And I just looked at this strictly from an observer's perspective. I was just noticing and almost taking note of what was going on. And I started floating up and I saw these little balls of white energy pinging around and bouncing around. And those were the souls of everybody that was in the hospital. And I saw how each ball of white light, how each soul was connected by a thin iridescent line. And that's oneness and the way that we're all connected. And then that's when everything started to speed up. And I felt myself very quickly going into the tunnel. I felt like I was on a roller coaster because it was fast and you don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it's exhilarating and it was exciting and almost joyful in a sense of, oh, I wonder where this is taking me. And the tunnel ride was very brief. And then I immediately dropped out of the tunnel into the white light. And the tunnel was very dark, very black inside. So then to be suddenly in this bright, beautiful white light, it took me a moment to adjust to it. And after I had a moment to adjust, the very next thing that I felt was a tremendous amount of love. Love that even, I get emotional even talking about it today. It was the most pure, unconditional love I have ever experienced in my life. You know, it was love for me that no matter what I had ever done in my life, 
what I had ever been through. It was just pure and unconditional love for me. The closest I've ever come to that feeling of love on earth is when my daughter was first born and I had her after my NDE. The first time she was handed to me and the first time that I held her, I remember looking in her eyes and she was looking in my eyes and that love that I felt for her and that I could feel that she felt for me, that her soul could feel for me. It was very pure and it was very unconditional. The love and the light is even bigger and deeper than that, which is really hard to wrap my head around as a human being, you know, now back in a human body. It's because when I was out of my body during my NDE, I was stripped of ego. I was stripped of the limitations of my brain. I was stripped of the limitations of my body and the light that I was in didn't have any of those limitations either. And so there was enough room for this complete, deep, unconditional, pure love. I had this realization that that is me also, that I am that love, that we human beings, we are that love. Every soul is that love because we are one with that light as well. It's just when we come into our bodies and onto planet earth, we get that what's perceived as a separation, but the separation, it's just an illusion. And so as I was soaking up that love, I realized that that's also who I am too, and that I'm always one with that, and that I had never been alone, even though I had felt alone many times in my life, that that light and that love had always been with me. Part of the peace that I experienced was that even though I had been in a tremendous amount of pain during the hours coming up to my near-death experience, I forgot about all of that pain once I was out of my body and in the light. And I know there's a big fear of death. And I also had a fear of death, of what would be next. And I think a lot of us too also have a fear of how we will die. Will it be quick or will we have to go through a lot of pain or illness? And a lot of the peace that I had once I was in the light was that whatever I had to go through in order to transition out of my body, even though it was a lot of pain, it wasn't even a thought at that point. It was just something that was in the background for me. And so there's a lot of peace in knowing that death isn't the end. Life is just a chapter. And however we do ultimately transition out of our bodies, there's nothing but peace and love that waits for us on the other side. I did not want to go back into my body after that beautiful experience that I was having in the light. That was the only place I wanted to be. I heard the firm but gentle and loving voice say, you need to go back. And I continued to protest and uh, try to get my way and say that I wanted to stay longer. But I knew that it wasn't a negotiation. And yet, as I continued to protest, I felt myself get nudged, lovingly nudged back into the tunnel. Very quickly backwards through the tunnel. And then next thing I knew, I was back into my body. I re-entered my body through the top of my head and then I was fully in my body long enough for me to register that I was back in this world, that I was no longer in that white light. The pain quickly returned and then I was unconscious for several hours until much later that evening. I eventually found out the next morning that I had a kidney stone that 
got stuck in my ureter. So all the toxins that typically are filtered out from your kidneys, all of those toxins were going back into my bloodstream and my entire bloodstream had become severely infected. My internal organs were infected, systematically shutting down, and I had gone into septic shock. I saw a couple of family members that looked very frightened, very concerned. Medical staff was there, my surgeon was there. And I wanted to tell everybody, don't worry, if I was supposed to die, if I was supposed to be dead, if this was the end for me, I would not have been sent back, but I wasn't able to do that. Honestly, it took several years to process a lot of what I really learned during my near-death experience and what I really learned when I was in that beautiful white. And it was really the knowing that all is well. When we're in our bodies, the saying that all is well, it doesn't make sense to us. When we're here in our bodies, we don't have a complete picture of what's happening. We don't see all of the pieces that are going on. And when we are out of our bodies, when we're in the light, when we've transitioned out and we are stripped of ego and the limitations of our brain and the limitations of our body, we have that 360 degree perspective. And when you have that 360 degree perspective, when you have the complete picture, when you see the complete picture, saying that all is well makes perfect sense. And that continues to bring me a lot of peace as I'm back in my body. There's a quote that I love that always helps to keep me in that peaceful place of all as well and in the peaceful place of flow. And it's nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. And there's so much truth to that. We can just get out of our own way long enough to allow that to be. And so I was very motivated after my NDE to look at my trauma and to heal my trauma. And healing isn't always fun, but it's so worth it because you want to have those holes filled back in and you want to feel complete so you can live in the peace of being your true and authentic self. And so you can experience the abundance and the love and the joy of really being in alignment with your soul's purpose. Your trauma is is your clue for knowing where your healing is. And our trauma and our conditioning, it's what we learn from. And our parents and our caregivers, I truly believe that they did the best they could with what they had. It's taken me a while to be able to say that and truly believe that and to heal any resentments that I might carry with me. Once you get there, there's a lot of peace in that too. And if we can all look at our traumas, look at our wounding and do what we can to heal that, our holes will start to get filled back in and the wounds will be healed and we will start to feel complete here on earth so we can live out our true purpose. Where you are in each moment that is your purpose. And there's a lot of peace in knowing that. If you're having a bad day, or if you're having a good day, if you, you know, yelled at your kids that day, or if you had a great day with your kids that day, you are always in your soul's purpose because we are here to learn. We are not meant to be perfect every single day to fit the definition of being in your soul's purpose. We're all learning, we're all evolving, we're all progressing along our path. And while we are here to learn, school is earth. 
the earth is school and it can often feel like the school of hard knocks. It's not all serious. Every school has a playground. So go out and find your playground and have some fun because it's not all meant to be serious. And we do need to lighten things up sometimes. If you've ever watched a group of children on the playground and they're trying to think of a game to play, they're inventing a game to play. They have so many different ideas and they are bursting with excitement to start the game. But then if you look at a group of adults that got put on that same playground to invent a game, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think of everything that could go wrong in the game and what will we do if that goes wrong and what is the rule around this and what are what's your role and what's your role that's very serious and sometimes that's needed but we could learn a lot from those children that are getting together as a group to have fun and to play a game and to just do what feels good there's a lot of learning in that for us we do all have a purpose in each day. We all have an ultimate purpose. And sometimes that purpose is just in being. You don't have to be doing, doing, doing all the time. Being is oftentimes all you need because it allows that flow. It keeps you from getting in the way all the time or the beauty that's trying to unfold in your life and the people's lives around you. And your soul and your intuition and your higher self is always there to guide you and to show you synchronicities and to open doors for you and to close doors that aren't meant for you. And just getting quiet enough and continuing to work on your healing so you can hear the wisdom of your intuition.